What's going on guys? My name is Nick Saka and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I built an 800 credit score. A little bit about myself, I own a few insurance agencies here in Las Vegas, Nevada, but before my time as an entrepreneur, I was a banker for a bank for about seven years and during my time in banking, I learned a lot about credit building, uh, hence because it was my job to sell a lot of bank-related products, you know, credit cards, auto loans, home loans, business loans, etc. And I got to see a lot of different people's credit situations. I got to see people with awful, horrific credit. <laughs> I got to see people with outstanding, immaculate credit, you know, credit scores as high as like 850, literally the top of the top. And so also because I had sales goals where I had to sell these products, I also sold myself these products, right? Uh, I got started at a young age of 19 years old where I found myself with, you know, three to five to six to seven to eight credit cards or lines of credit myself. And so I got to learn a lot about what it takes to build uh, a solid credit score and I find myself today scratching at the door of an 800 credit score. Last I checked, I was about, about 791, so it's a little clickbaity, but <laughs> I'm right there, y'all. And uh, today I'm gonna give you guys uh, everything that I know about building the best credit score you can possibly build. So if you get some value out of this video, do me a huge favor, destroy the like button and make it turn blue. Subscribe for all things entrepreneurship, self-development, and insurance, and let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about how your credit score is made up. Your credit score is made up of five different categories, each having a different weight and percentage of uh, how that contributes to your credit score. And the single most important category in building a, a solid credit score is your payment history. You know, are you making your payments on time? This category is 35% of your credit score. And essentially lenders want to know that if they lend you money, that you're gonna pay them back on time. It's common sense. If you have a credit card and there's a payment due, make the darn minimum payment. And, uh, and if you have any lates on your credit history, they stick with you for seven years before, they, before they're erased. And the only way around that, right, so if you have a credit card, right, and you've had it for one year and you had one late payment, I don't know the math on that, but so far you're, you're 11 for 12. And if you break down the, the percentage of, of that, that's gonna hinder your overall FICO score. And the only way around that is to have more and more payments. And so it's just a, a length game. And so, but the most important thing is to just make your payments on time. So that way, cause this is, like I said, the most important factor in, in building your credit score. And so just make your payments on time. Another trick around that is if you have multiple credit cards and you have multiple payments uh, due, and I'm not saying, and I'm gonna go into point number two where I'm not encouraging you to, to run up balances on every single one of your credit cards, but the more payments that you have, the better that's gonna affect your ratio if you happen to have a couple late payments. But always make your payments on time. You know, credit building is a tool uh, and it shouldn't be used as like a thought of like, you know, I have this extra money. It's, it's, it shouldn't be viewed as like that. There are plenty of people in my banking history where there are buddies where I sold them a credit card and I, you know, a one, one week later, one month later, a year later, I see those credit card balances run up and I'm like, oh crap, you know, why are you making your late payments? I try to get them another one and they don't get approved. But Rule number one is make your payments on time. This is just an obvious, it's the highest weighted category in building uh, an 800 credit score. The second highest weighted category as it relates to building your credit is credit utilization, AKA the amounts that you owe on your credit cards. Experts recommend that you don't owe more than 30% of what's available to you. So for instance, if you have one credit card that has a $10,000 balance, you should never go above 30%. Uh, so 3,000, never run up more than $3,000 on your credit card. Uh, and rule of thumb here is, you know, my experience at the bank, I just got approved for multiple credit cards. I didn't shut these credit cards down, I just kept them. Uh, my advice to you is to get as many 
as many uh, zero annual fee, zero dollar annual fee credit cards because if there's no annual fee, then it's no harm, no foul. And the more credit cards you have, the higher that's available, the higher the amount that's available to you, the more you can run up without having to work in these calculations and then really be worried about if you're exceeding that 30%. But even though experts say it's 30%, my rule of thumb is to never go above 20%. And you know, as a business owner, I have, you know, my run my credit cards up, but I pay them off every single month. It's when you keep those balances uh, for long periods of time, the lenders see you as a risk that you have a higher probability of defaulting on those credit cards, and so they're not going to trust you. You know, you're you're almost like you're you're on edge, right? Like you can potentially not pay this uh, this balance off, and so my rule of thumb is get as many credit cards as you can in the beginning. If you're young and just starting out. Get as many as you can. You know, if you get, if you get pre-approved six months later, get another one. Uh, it, have as many credit cards with as many high balances as possible. I'm sorry, high limits, not balances. <laughs> Don't run up your balances. Have as many high limits as you possibly can. So that way, uh, when something comes up and you do need to run a credit card balance, uh, uh, you know, make a couple transactions on that credit card that you don't have to worry about your credit card tanking. I will tell you guys about my biggest mistake uh, in in, my, in growing my credit was uh, uh, I bought a Cadillac one time on my line of credit. I had about a nine thousand dollar line of credit. Maybe it was maybe it was twelve thousand. And uh, and I couldn't get financed to buy this car, <laughs> and I just gave them my credit card, and I literally went from like a 760 credit score to the very fall. Like a few days later, I checked my credit score, um, and it went down to about like 640, and I was like, holy cow! What happened? And I learned the hard way. I made a couple mistakes, obviously, along the way, but. Do not run. I mean, I ended up selling that car and paying the balance off because I couldn't fathom it and the car was a piece of crap anyways. But rule of thumb is do not run up balances on your credit cards. The banks will see that you're using the majority of the card. Therefore, they're not going to get let you get approved for another one, right? And so my, my, my advice to you is get approved for as many credit cards as you can. Uh, without using them because if you start using them then you won't be able to get approved for another one. So credit utilization is the second highest weighted category. It's 30% of your FICO score makeup. Do not run up balances. Stay below the 30% utilization and you will experience a, uh, a rising credit score. Uh, so make sure you're not running up these balances. The third highest way to category in building your credit score is the length of history. This is how long you have been in the game for, right? Like how many trade lines you have had and they average them uh, all together into your overall length of history. So as I look at my, you know, credit karma makeup of my score, this one's actually one of my lowest categories because I've only had I've only been building credit. I've only had available trade lines for about a uh, about a, a decade now or 12 between 10 and 13 years. And so this is why when I was at the bank Older people had the 850, 840, 830 FICO scores because they've been in the game for so long and they have been building credit for, gosh, like 50 years. And so there's nothing that we can do about this one except starting as soon as we can. If you're 18, as soon as you're 18, get approved for a credit card. Get a secured credit card if you have to. A secured credit card is one of those prepaid credit cards. Get on one of your parents' credit cards because that would actually help you start establishing credit. Of course, get on somebody that you trust. You don't want to get on somebody that's just gonna, you know, ruin you uh, with their with their you know spending habits and things like that. But if somebody trusts you and you trust them, particularly like a parent or an uncle or somebody, uh, hop on one of their credit cards so that way it starts establishing your credit history as soon as possible. Um, so do whatever it takes to start that process as soon as you can and, uh, and that will help build your FICO. Uh, again, it's not one that we can really control, it's just going to take time. But what the, uh, what the FICO considers is again the length of your oldest account and every time you get a new account it just, it just divides 
divides, the, it just averages the two out. And so you'll want to start as soon as possible, um, as fast as you can. 10% of your FICO makeup is your credit mix. So this is the mix between credit cards, installment loans, lines of credit. And so installment loans can be like your home or it can be your car where it's a fixed monthly payment on an ongoing basis. Whereas a credit card is, you know, it's, it's revolving, right? You can run up a credit card and they're going to calculate how much you owe on that credit card every month. And then a line of credit, uh, uh, is, is a line of credit. And you know, depending on how much you use, that's how much you're going to have to pay back. It's not a fixed amount that you're making every single month. And so just your overall credit mix, they want to see how you were with credit cards. They want to see how you were with lines of credit. They want to see how you were with installment loans. And what I would tell you is I really didn't start approaching the uh, close to the 800s until I bought a house, until I bought my home. It was like the one missing element of my FICO. I really always floated around like 760, 780, but what's getting me over the hump is that installment loan uh, for a house. And uh, so what I would tell you is when you're get, just getting started out, you gotta start off with the credit cards, right? The banks don't trust you if you only have uh, a five thousand dollar credit card and you're using four thousand of it they don't trust you hence why your credit score is going to be bad you want to have as many as you possibly can to be looked at and deemed as a responsible payer so if you have uh, let's just say you have seven or eight credit cards that total an amount of a hundred thousand dollars that's available to you that Will, that will, sh uh, will show the banks that you're responsible, that this person has had oh, close to 100,000 available to them and they were responsible with it. They didn't go crazy with it. They didn't go shopping. And so again, that's why I encourage you to have as many credit cards as you possibly can. That doesn't mean use all of them or utilize all of them. Just maybe buy gas with it here and there. Maybe buy groceries with it here and there and then pay it off on a monthly basis. Get the rewards from it. Um, when you're just starting out, you might not get rewards, but but um, eventually you will get rewards and you can you know, utilize them and, and, and convert them over to, uh, to cash or travel perks and so on and so forth. That's another video uh, where I talk about credit card rewards, but the credit mix makes up for 10% of your overall uh, FICO score and make sure that you are pretty well-rounded as it relates to that. Of course, so you're going to have to start off with regular basic credit cards and then work your way into lines of credit and then an auto loan and then, of course, a home. Uh, but start off with credit cards. I recommend if you're just getting started out, get, try to get five. Like sit on five that don't have an annual fee. Do not close them out and just use them as you go. And the final 10% of how your FICO score is made up is uh, inquiries credit inquiries, uh, AKA new credit. Now, if you're, you, if you're uh, applying for a lot of credit, you know, whether that's credit cards or lines of credit or auto loans, that's why when you go to a car dealership, uh, always get your, uh, get your loan pre-approved before you go to a car dealership because they will literally send your information out to 10 or 12 different uh, finance companies and they will all run your credit and you'll get declined letters in the mail and you're like what the heck is this Bank of America what do you mean I was declined and they will run your credit multiple inquiries which will actually hurt your FICO score but rule of thumb is uh, is to not run your credit so many times within a short period of time because those credit inquiries I believe stay on your credit for about two years and uh, and then they affect your score but it's a small makeup it's only 10% but again, you want to avoid running multiple credit inquiries because that communicates to lenders like, what, what's this person going through? Like, are they about to file BK on me? And, and you know, why are they applying for so much credit? We're a little suspicious here. So uh, credit inquiries, do it strategically. Of course, in the beginning, you have no choice. And because this is the lowest weighted category, in the beginning, apply for credit cards because you need them. It's like long-term uh, it's going to hurt you short term by having inquiries, but long term with the credit utilization and making your payments on time, it's actually going to benefit you uh, in the long run. So get your credit inquiries out of the way early. And of course, watch how many times you're running it as time goes on. Don't say yes to every single pre-approval uh, that you get as time goes on. Do not, you know, stop running your credit a gazillion times because that's actually going to hurt you. 
So there you have it, guys. Those are uh, the five categories of how your FICO score is, is, is made up of and how it's calculated. And uh, hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of advice on how I've built my FICO score over the years. And uh, it's really simple. I mean, I'm just... I've, I apply. I started off with five to ten credit cards in the beginning and lines of credit, and I was super responsible with them. I did everything it took to make sure I got my payments in on time. Um, I never ran up a high utilization. I mean, there was time during during uh, there were times during the school semesters where I was paying for my education on my credit cards because I refused to take out a, a school loan, a student loan, and that was the only time that my balances got you know trended a little bit higher but i worked my face off i did overtime i delivered pizzas i did whatever it took to keep those balances down and of course the inquiries i didn't run my credit you know over and over again like crazy uh the the length of history that's just something that we just don't have control over uh and so that's just the time game uh, and that's just gonna take time to build that category uh, but overall every other category that i gave you today is controllable now there are some of you guys that have collections or have things on your credit derogatories and things that you you are able to dispute um, and if you go to you know if you go to experian.com or transunion.com they will give you information on how to dispute it it's all done online or over the phone and so if there's anything on your credit that you don't agree with or is there by mistake or maybe you had identity theft that's all taken care of with a dispute process that you're gonna have to do online and that's what I would advise you to do first because if that's what's weighing your FICO down in the first place that is the it's like an anchor it's like a uh, it's like an it's like a huge weight just just holding your FICO down and until you take care of that all of these other points are irrelevant you must take care of those first and of course there are you know if you did have a charge off if you owed a credit if you had a credit card that went into collections the bank will typically send or, or sell that balance to uh, to a collection company for pennies on the dollar, and the collection company is going to be calling you and calling you, trying to get you to make that payment. And you can typically negotiate with them, but you're going to want to make sure that you get proof that it's been squared away, so that way you can then take that to Experian, TransUnion, and the and the uh, Equifax and your credit reporting companies to make sure that they get that collection removed or that derogatory removed from your credit. Um, so first and foremost, if you have any derogatories, they must be taken care of first. In addition to all the tips that I gave you today, and I may make another video specifically on the dispute process, uh, but hopefully that was enough uh, tips for you today to help you start taking steps to improve your credit. So if you got some value out of this video, do me a huge favor, destroy the like button, Subscribe if you got some uh, value and for all things insurance, entrepreneurship, and self-development. Follow me on all my social media platforms as well. I appreciate you guys for watching. Go and build those FICO scores up. Let's get it.